Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'm going to be growing sacred lotus plants from seed. So the sacred lotus is quite an interesting plant. I've seen it on my travels in the Far East, in, in, uh, in China and also in Taiwan. Now it's a very widely um, distributed plant. It's found all over the tropics in most of the world now because it's, it's such a popular ornamental. But even before the advent of air travel and widespread movement, it's very widely spread from Iran all the way over to China. So this plant has a very large distribution, partly because it's so useful to humans, humans have moved it around the place, and also because it's very adaptable. So although this is a tropical plant, it does actually grow in lots of different areas, and because it grows underwater, it can survive frost. So although the plant itself can't survive frost, because it grows very deep underwater, and can grow up to two meters or two and a half meters in depth, it can grow in places which are quite cold in the winter time, and the water protects the roots from freezing. So this plant, as I say, if it's in a tropical location, will grow year round with leaves and flowers. If it's in a temperate place, it will, it will die down in the winter and it will survive under the water, protected from the frost that way. But it does need quite high temperatures to grow as it is a tropical plant. So I'm going to be growing it here in North Scotland. I'll try probably one plant outside, see how it does. I'm not expecting much growth from it though. I'll also try another one inside a, inside a um, polytunnel where the temperatures regularly get up to 30 to 35 degrees Celsius and it should grow quite well there. And now it's quite, an, as I say, it's quite an interesting plant mostly grown for its foliage and its and its flowers. The flowers look really quite attractive. There's lots of different types of them as well, lots of different colours. And the leaves as well are quite nice. They've got this amazing waterproof effect. I'll, um, if I don't have any photos, I'll try and show you the waterproof effect once this actually germinates because it is quite spectacular. It's almost like a duck's back. It's completely hydrophobic and the water just sheets off. You just can't get the leaves wet at all. And there's lots of different uses, I say, for this plant. It's Every part of it is edible. The tubers are quite nice. I've eaten them quite a few times. And uh, they're kind of like a starchy tuber. Quite unusual looking though because they have lots of holes that run through them. Same with the stems, there's a lot of holes uh, to do with it being an aquatic plant. A lot of aquatic plants tend to have these kind of water channels to help with the, the oxygen to more easily flow through the plant. And there's also a lot of different varieties as well. So I don't know what this variety this is. All I know is it's the, the straight species. The, the species name is Nilumbo nucifer. And this variety, as I say, I don't know what type it is. But there's lots of different types. Some of them have been bred for the seeds. They have extra large seeds. Other ones are bred for the flower heads. The flower heads are quite unusual looking and you can quite often find them in flower arranging. And then other ones have been bred for nicer flowers, whereas others have been bred for the extra fat, tasty tubers instead of having the skinny tubers that the wild variety would more likely have. So I don't know what this one will be, but it'll be interesting to see how it grows for me anyway. As I say, my climate isn't ideal for it, but as long as I can overwinter it, I'll probably get a little bit of growth over the summer. Maybe never any flowers, but that'll just be a bonus if I do ever get flowering. So I now need to prepare these seeds for germination. These seeds really don't want to germinate at all. They're very, very hard. They're basically like miniature little time capsules. The seed is, is, has such a thick and, and a strong seed coat that no water can get into the seed and it just doesn't allow it to germinate at all because it's so well protected. The reason it does this is because of where it grows. It tends to grow on river banks and oxbow lakes. So when you get a meandering river, you'll quite often meander so much that it breaks through its own channel and the river will take a new channel, leaving the old, old channel almost dry, but it'll, just, it'll still be a boggy area and it'll be more like a, a pond. And those oxbow lakes, they move all the time. Where this grows in the wild, the landscape will be changing all the time with erosion and, and the moving of the, the river course. So the idea of that is with these seeds, the seeds go in the water, they stay dormant for a long time. And so if the, the river moves off and it's no longer good for growing, they'll remain dormant. And then when the conditions improve again, they can start growing. And because of this, they found some seeds in China that were over 1,300 years old and they still successfully germinated. So the, the dormancy is very good in these seeds. I don't need to worry about these being uh, fresh seeds or anything like that. Even if these seeds are 100, 200 years old, they probably have a good chance of germinating because they have such good dormancy and they're so well protected. But as I say, that makes it very difficult to germinate them. If I just put them in water, there's a chance that they might germinate, but there's also a chance that they might just sit there and 100 years later, I'll still have no plants germinating. So what I need to do is break down the seed coat. This will happen in the wild naturally with bacteria, fungus, or even just mechanical action of water or sand kind of washing ac across the surface of the seed coat. But I'll need to do this manually. So what I'll be doing is I'll be, I'll be filing this down with a metal file. So these seeds are quite large, which makes the filing down a bit easier. I need to break down the seed coat to mimic what would happen in the wild. And this will allow the, allow the water to get into the seed and allow the seed to germinate. So I'm just gonna get the side of it here. It grows out of the end points, so I don't want to damage them. I'm just going to get the seed coat and I'm just going to rub it on the metal file. And I'm just going to keep regularly checking it because I don't want to go through too far and actually damage the seed itself. But I'm just wanting to go through that black layer of the seed coat 
and see a little bit of white starting to appear of the seed itself. So I'm just going to go ahead now and file this down. So I've now filed this seed down enough. So there's actually two layers to the seed coat. You only really need to go for the first one, but if you can go for the second one as well, you get slightly faster germination. You can see there, I've, I've got kind of a ring shape. And there's a very slight white line on that ring. Once you start seeing the white line, that's just about deep enough. That means you've gone through the first layer of the seed coat. Now, to start going for the second layer, you can see in the very center of the seed, there's kind of like a lighter section. That's the actual seed itself starting to sow through the, the section of the seed which stores the energy. And if that section you don't want to go into. Now, if I had gone into it, it would be bright white or maybe like a cream color. It's just starting to appear because the, the seed coat is extremely thin. And that's around about the stage I want to be. I don't want to go in and actually, da actually damage the seed because that could let an infection and the seed might die off from rotting away. So that's about the perfect stage I want to be at. So I'll just go ahead and do this with the rest of the seeds and then I'll sow them in some water to get them germinating. So now that these, all these seeds have been sanded down, it's ready to get them germinating. All I need to do, because these are aquatic plants, is soak them in water. Now with most plants, you can soak the seeds in the water for a short period of time, maybe 24 hours, just to increase the germination speed. Any longer than that, and normally you risk that the seeds might drown because there's not enough oxygen. But as these are aquatic plants, they're quite happy to be submerged. So I'm just gonna pop them all in the water. If they sink, it's, it's more likely that the seeds are viable. If they float, it's less likely that they're viable. So you can see that last one there popped up very quick and floated. That one might not actually um, germinate because it might not be fully viable. But the other ones have sunk, so that's a good sign. So what I need to do now is leave this somewhere nice and warm, between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. As I say, they're tropical plants. They need somewhere nice and warm. And they should be germinating within a week or so, possibly even quicker because I've damaged the seed coat there. So I'll see you guys later in the video in a few days' time and we'll see what the germination is like. So as you can see, it's a bit longer than a few days. It's actually two months later. I was a bit busy. I forgot about this video project and I basically had on time lapses for quite a while as well. So it's actually two months later now. And as you can see, we've had mixed results. So we did have good germination. There was four seeds in total and we had three germinate. So I'm quite happy with that. So I had two in the back here, which you saw on the time lapse. They did quite well to begin with. Then they seemed to be slowing down a bit. There was just pure water in the bowl, so I thought I better give it some fertilizer. I was a little apprehensive because I thought there is a risk that the algae might bloom and take over, but I was hoping there was enough coverage on the surface that that would keep out the light as I was having this with a grow light above it for the time lapse. But unfortunately, as you can see from the time lapse, the algae really took off and it's basically killed the plant. So unfortunately, the two in the back there have died, but I had another one and uh, it germinated a bit later and I actually just kept it in this cup. This is the cup that I was actually just uh, having them in to begin with just to get them started and I just left it growing. So there's also a dead seed in here as well, but you can see there it's actually quite healthy this one. Each new leaf is larger than the last and it's starting to come up with something that looks a bit like a runner. So I think it's going into a different phase of life now. So you can see right at the back there, there's kind of like a um, like a different kind of shoot coming up. That's not a leaf that, because it has little roots starting to form on it. It appears to be some kind of runner which is starting to come. So I think it's gonna start running now and it might start growing different leaves as well. I just have to wait and see. But it was also interesting to see how the, the, the plant grows when it first starts. So with mature sacred lotus plants, they don't grow like water li lilies. They don't have floating leaves. The leaves are on quite long, strong stalks and they can grow quite high, a good meter or, or more above the water and they're quite sturdy and upright, whereas these ones, as you saw from before, they grow up like normal lily leaves, they just kind of float on the surface, they search for the water, so they can obviously tell where the water is, because these ones which weren't in any water, they've grown very short, they only just come out of the cup, so they probably either tell by the moisture or by the light levels how much water there is, and they just float, they just grow basically enough to float on the surface of the water, and these ones, as I say, have just come slightly above 
the uh, the cup but these were only very short whereas the ones at the back are probably about a foot or so in length they did grow a bit longer and they kept moving around you'll see that on the, on the time lapse how they kind of drift around on top of the water surface because they were growing longer even though they would got to the surface so it's interesting to see that but as I say although they've grown these leaves they are just like the floating type so even these ones they're not very strong stems and they, these are kind of flopping around you can see see there they're not got much uh, strength to them so they will actually have stronger better supporting stems later on and that will be when it gets to a more mature phase at the moment it's just in the juvenile phase so what I'm going to do now is this one I'm going to transfer it into a pot which is um, with has no drainage holes I'm going to keep it in waterlogged soil see how it grows it should grow better in waterlogged soil than just pure water and uh, these are used to growing in silty conditions at the bottom of lake beds so this one should do better with that now I'm just going to show you the amazing water repellent properties of this leaf it really is amazing it's like a duck's back the uh, the leaf is completely water repellent and you can put water on it and it just comes off like it's a like a duck's feathers or like a very water repellent surface so i'll show you this effect here i'm just going to put some water on this leaf hopefully i can show you the problem is it's so waterproof that the water really doesn't want to stick on it and it will just basically come off as quickly as possible it will just fly off is there any kind of angle on this it won't stay on it'll just completely come off of the uh, the leaf but I'll try and do the smallest uh, drop of water possible that way there's more likelihood of seeing it so I'm just going to use a small pipette and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of water on but as I say if it's at a slight angle it'll probably just run straight off there's like there's virtually no friction at all with this once it's on there so here we go As you saw, it just ran off. Hopefully that was, uh, you can see that it was so quick. I'll try and get this leaf a bit flatter, see if we can balance a water droplet on it. But as I say, it's very difficult because it is just so uh, repellent of water. The smaller the drop I use, the more likely it is that we can actually get one to stay. There we go, we got one on there. You can see that's just kind of perched on the leaf there. And if I just give it the tiniest little bit of a tap to the leaf, you can see it just shoots off straight away. It's just so water repellent. There's just no way of keeping it on there unless it's perfectly level. So it is quite a remarkable leaf in how water repellent it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get another water droplet on there for you. And then going to go with my macro camera super close to it. And we'll see what, what it looks like under a really close uh, high magnification. So here we have it under some extreme magnification. And hopefully you can see it. You can probably see a bit of a reflection of my room. Uh, the way I've focused it there and uh, I can just give it a little tap I'm just tapping the table it's on very gently I can't actually see any movement with the naked eye but you can see there that the thing just the uh, the water just vibrates because of the the way it just kind of bounces on the leaf I'll just pull the focus slightly in and out so you can see different parts of the um, of it as well as I do it now because it is so close up with the macro right now it's very difficult for me to focus the whole lot at once but you can see there it really just kind of bounces on the um, on the leaf there very interesting effect that we've got and uh, what I'll do is I'll try and get even closer if I can but basically a thing that makes it waterproof is on the actual leaf there's lots of little waxy bumps um, I don't think I can show that with my um, macro camera even though I can see things like individual cells on plants sometimes I don't think I can get close enough to see that waxy molecule but I'll see if I can I'll get as close as possible so I'm now focusing as close as I can get I'm actually having to use a bit of additional light because it, it's such a close macro shot I'll try and give you an example of what kind of scale this is by using uh, a ballpoint pen so this is just a regular ballpoint pen I'm going to bring into shot now and this will just give you an idea of how much I've zoomed in to try and show you the effect that uh, this water water has you can see there that's a, a normal sized ballpoint pen there any kind of movement even breathing is making this move now so you can see we've got some interesting air bubbles in the top there but I'll go down more to the leaf now so you can see hopefully you can see some of the little graininess to the leaf that's some of the waxy bumps that which give it the waterproofing now uh, you can also see how nicely that water ball actually focuses the light from my phone there it gives it really is quite like a lens uh, the way it's focusing it there but as, as, as I was saying you can just about see some of the the waxy bits and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some photos as well of the leaf as close as I, can, as I can get it and I'll digitally crop in as well just to see if we can see some of that texture so that's all for this video what I will do is I will as I say put this in a, in a pot soon with some soil 
and then we'll see how it does. I've also put a few seeds into my parents' pond in the polytunnel. It is very full of algae, unfortunately, so I'm not sure how well they'll do. But if they do well, and if this one does well, then I'll do another video update at the end of the summer. We'll see how much these plants have grown, and hopefully if all goes well, you'll have some decent sized leaves on good sturdy stalks. I don't think there's any chance of flowers for me here in North Scotland, but if I get flowers maybe next year, that would be a great bonus as they are really nice, beautiful flowers. So that's all for this video, and I'll see you guys hopefully in an update later this summer.